And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I've got some returning good brothers to the temple. Coming to us all the way from open-ended games, creators of the recently re released, digitally anyway, uh, of against the Dark Master, we have we have in the blue in the blue corner, Nicola Se Segaloni, <laughs> and I'm, I I said I was no, gonna I, that's, I said I was that's gonna correct that's correct <laughs> yep, um, and the in, and the in the impronounceable the incomparable, <laughs> um, <laughs> Mister yeah, Mister, you, you, you can call me Max yeah uh, Mister Max uh, yeah yeah. Everyone does that. Even even here in Italy, no one calls me with my full name. It's just too damn long. Is, I think I recall the last time I had you on, so, somebody had made some some crack that um, that as, asking what asking wh why, <laughs> whether whether or not there was some sort of curse put on you to be given a name like that. <laughs> um, which I not, not even his parents call him for the full name because it's too long. No, no, no. If that's the case, then why give him You know what? I'm overthinking this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, th thanks for com thanks for coming back to the temple. How, how have you two been ho been holding up in all the insanity of current year? No problem. Mm -hmm. Always uh, a pleasure be back being back. Yeah. Um. Well, I keep well, I I keep I keep spotting all the um. All the t all the thing all the things about typos, but so now I've had now Max, I've had you on I've had you on in the past for when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the project, and yeah, some of it w there some of it will be going over the <laughs> quote unquote lost episode, i.e. i.e. because OBS screwed me the last time I had you guys on, um. But one thing I'm um, one thing I am I am curious about from um, Nicola's perspective because I got um, Max's perspective on how the thing started. But Nicola, how how did you first get in, first get involved with the project and being the layout guy for it? Uh, I guess we were needing one, <laughs> and I made uh, you know uh, out of a need. We say in Italy that we, you know mm -hmm. out of a need we make a virtue. So uh, I learned to do layout because we needed a layout artist and and layout uh, you know uh, person, and I was yeah. a little familiar with layout uh, uh, in the past, but mm -hmm. just using um, regular software, not um, in design, which is you know the standard industry standard, and uh, I um, uh, I had some knowledge about. Uh, you know, spacing and 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 fonts, the correlation and hierarchy and so on. So in the beginning, we we used um, the first the first first quick start release was um, actually made with um, a regular software that you find in any computer. Mm -hmm. And um, that you know, when you start to lay out like a hundred, a hundred and fifty pages. You know, you, you live, you learn, and I, I, I figure out certain things. And, you know, we live in an age, an era where uh, everything can be found online in terms of tutorial and learning sources and um, and such. So, you know, I went on some tutorials, and all of a sudden, one day clicked to me how to do use in design. And since then, you know, it's, a, it's just uh, being a constant improvement. And with uh, especially with the help of uh, Tom, which he has, um, uh, he excels in what I lack, in what I lack, which is I'm not super creative like he is. And uh, he was able, he the, the, the original layout uh, was made in Photoshop by him, how mm -hmm. pages should look. And I was able to reproduce that um, 
you know, in a constant way throughout the whole, uh, in a coherent, a constant way throughout the whole in design. Yeah. Um, Tom, Tom's uh, also pretty hard I'll do for details. So. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the counter, you know, <laughs> the other side on the same token, working with him, like, you know, I would get, um, usually we do everything, we have like a group chat where we all, you know, discuss everything. But when I get a private message from Tom, I'm in trouble. I mean, that he all of a sudden doesn't like something that it's one of the most common thing in the layout and you have to change it, you know. Yeah, yeah we have to move pages. everything yeah, five pixels to the right. <laughs> yeah. well, everything. Thank God when I was going through this project, I, you know, said everything that in a way that if you ask for that, I was able to do it in a more in a, in a decent way. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, we had a big change after we, we uh, published the first um, release of the full rules back in September, and we will be able to, to fix it in like a few days, which, you know, maybe when I first started, that would be like a nightmare or not even be able to do it. So I'm, I have to, you know, give some uh, credit to Tom to uh, being so anal that I had to set all these... <laughs> you know, a self-defense mechanism. So I think in case he wants to change something, <laughs> it won't take me the rest of my life to do it. So uh, I guess that, you know, always have to find the bright side, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, would, well with the, way you, the way you say it like that, were, were, there, were there cases where the... Um, where, the where the text and the, the text... What the text wants and what the layout wants didn't always get along. Yeah. So what happened once was uh, and I think we can talk about this now because there's um, something that regards the quick start, which was released more than a year ago, mm-hmm. and it's a product that is still supported by us in, in a term that it's you know I always suggest as a as a good entry if people wants to uh, dip their toes. I mean, um, you know, um, uh, dip their toes into our water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, to learn the the basic of the games without have to having to pay for the you know full core rules. Uh, there was one point that we went. Tomaso asked me to go with one font, and like I don't know, two weeks before releasing the whole thing, he said, "You know what? I think I like this font more." And uh, so changing a font in in a document that at the time it was a hundred, I think hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty pages to quick start was. It's a big deal because yeah. you know, uh, you know that each each um, the way that the text flows. Sometimes you have to uh, you know interrupt and you know and the page. You know so there is a, there is a little bit of um, you know uh, manual settings they have to go mm-hmm. on each kind of in each page, and uh, there was there was something that made me I think um, create some new curse in in my head against them, you know, some new, I don't want to be vulgar in your podcast. No, but, no, uh... no, 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 there is no problem with vulgarity here in the monastery. We use the seven dirty words as our mantras. I would be bastard, probably. Uh, so, uh, that's, 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 well, I, I mean, over after, after the first, uh, after the experience of the quick start, which was a huge learning experience, uh, I don't think we had, I don't think I had any real issue in term in the layout in terms of if there was a big change, I wasn't able to handle it. Yeah. And, uh, and um, it's sometimes to my surprise because I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not in this field for 20 years or so. But when, when, you know, a big change would happen, I always scared that, you know, everything breaks up. Instead, uh, the, the the document was following the you know a suggestion that I found online and the classes that I took, um, you know having that knowledge when I set up the document the first time helped me uh, prevent uh, any huge delay in in case that the text and the layout wouldn't go together, and uh, it was uh, it was I was happy about it I have to say and uh, you know. Uh, max support. <laughs> uh, also. Well, I one thing I, I think one thing that um, can give you an idea of, of the of how the layout process went is just that um, as soon as we finish, we basically said that our next project uh, won't be another six hundred 
fades longer. <laughs> 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 we won't be doing this anymore. <laughs> um, maybe in few, maybe a few years, if we, you know, we kind of miss working on a big document. Yeah, I, I don't, but... I don't know if we, if you are going. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we're gonna be rich and famous by the time, so we can hire a layout artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't. You see, th this is what this is why I think this is why I think that more disputes should be should be settled through gentlemen's duels. <laughs> I think uh, I think that uh, maybe we're gonna use that uh, next time. Thomas asks me something, I'm gonna invite him to a gentleman duel. Yeah. Uh, um, I either, think it's a good idea. Either. Oh, I might, I might be, I might be, I might be biased because of, because of where I come from. Either, either that or either that or just a good old hockey fight. <laughs> oh, that, or that. We don't have hockey in Italy, so. Um, yeah, that. Yeah, that's uh, the. Yeah, it's the you, that's you the don't have you. hockey in Italy. Here, here in my part of Italy, my original Italy, that's. Uh, I, I, I hockey is not that popular, but it's it's quite uh, played. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to. Ha I'm not going to have anybody. Anybody play the. Um, I'm not going to have anybody play ro um, Roman football because um, that that stuff gets that stuff gets nasty, and that's why that is only played once uh, a year. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a uh, Flor Florentian football. Team. Yeah, it's a very yeah, but... uh, gruesome. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, it's pr it's pretty. Uh, it pretty makes for a good. It makes for a good campaign seed, but. Um, that's as far as I'm willing to go. Yeah, yeah. We should yeah, put yeah. rules for that, Blue Max, next time. Um, <laughs> you're around in Florence, and someone uh, invites you to play football. Just, just say no. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I mean, unless you, I mean, unless you have a, a, a dentist appointment the next day. Oh. <laughs> Otherwise, you would go around with no teeth. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I can't. Like, I, I need. To, I need to think of a I need to think of a, a Italian equivalent of of a full contact sport, and um, obviously I'm not I'm not going to use football as an example because football players will flail and flop at the at the nearest at the slightest clipping, so I can't use that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, that's true. Um, as you say, you're looking for a sport similar to hockey or football, American <laughs> football. Just some, I just some rugby, rugby. Oh yeah, oh yeah, of course. Of course, rugby. There's the there's the old. Si I'm not sure if the saying's the same. I'm not sure if there's an equivalent saying in Italy, but there's there's a yes. But during the brief time that I did ru that I did rugby um, growing up, there was the um, old saying of give give blood, play rugby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Most most of people who play rugby don't have ears, or it's part of the ears because they're yeah. all clipped and and cut. Um. Like I like I said, it's a contact sport. It ain't ballet. Um, but you know what you're signing for. <laughs> well, I um, when I when I did when I did hockey, it, it was it was my it was my job to play defense. So I was basically told, "Hey, Mildred, you see that guy with the puck over there?" Yes, I do. I don't want to fix that. Okay. <laughs> um, and when but when it but um. Something that something that was kind of hinted at last time was, would it be fair? Would it be fair to say that the person who's really who really pushed for the whole metal influence with against the Dark Master was Max? Because I think <laughs> I, I, well, I think it, either for sure. I think what either Nick sure. or Tom had had jokingly said that that he that he forced it on everybody else. No, no, Max and Tom. <laughs> Tom is a, Tom is a metal uh, head. Just Tom, as well yeah, as, Tom, uh, I. I I just think well can, can remember that. Well, but, it, it, it uh, could be, could be that was uh, my idea. But, mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, you know, I, I do remember I, that Max had the idea and Tom was on board, and I was like, "Yeah, okay, Tom is. whatever." <laughs> Tom was immediately on board, and he he liked the idea, mm -hmm. and I think it's a great idea because yeah, uh, yeah, Nick I, is I, the I, heretic here. Uh, I'm I'm a more like a soft rock kind of guy, uh, yeah. so it's not and classical music. Uh, I, I just give me that. I'll that I'll give you I'll music. give you a pass on I'll give you a pass on classical. But as as far as the soft as far as the whole soft no rock no thing, it's not soft. I'm sorry I'm sorry. Wait wait wait. Not soft rock intent. But but I what I wanted to say you know, is like more like Nickelback, 
Fuck, no, no. No, no, you're no, not, no. dude. You're not helping your case. <laughs> no, no, come back. No, no, come back. No, no, come back. No, 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 no. But you know, I know a classic rock, uh, rock and roll. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. I, I think. I think I got. I think I got something for you as well because there's. Um, you'd probably like Ghost. Um, especially, especially this time of year. Um, <laughs> but I, but, but what, but, um, I think it'd be, fa- I think it'd be fair to say that, that, um, kind of the conceptualization with Against the Dark Master started out as this combination of both metal and, um, 80s fantasy movies, I think was what was talked about last time. That's not, that's not yeah. too far-fetched, Yeah. Yeah. No. That's good. That's good. Uh, that's yeah, a good. Uh... <clears throat> also, uh, yeah, it's, it's it, it began um, kind of like a nostalgia thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, remembering the eighties bad uh, fantasy movies mm-hmm. or, or good fantasy movies depends on who you ask. Well, and, I, I would um, I would say that those two are interchangeable, but then I remembered Beastmaster <laughs> Two exists, so yeah, I can't go with that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, but you know, eighties fantasy movies was. Um, but but, think, but uh, if I if I, if I may, I think I think that um, bad movies in particular, uh, <laughs> fantasy bad fantasy movies, are excellent for uh, um, campaigns uh, hooks, you know, to give yeah. to give you ideas for campaigns because they often take this ridiculous concept and. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the basic underneath idea can can be very interesting and the only problem in the movies are usually the execution yeah uh, particularly for the 80s one because they obviously didn't have uh, cheesy so uh, yeah you know they you, you, uh, they couldn't then uh, do very much especially with the budget they mm-hmm. wanted to have yeah, so, yeah. um. Of course, the the big one that always comes to mind for me, as far as, when it comes to that, is um, I'm not sh- I'm not sure if I'm I wouldn't be surprised if it was titled something else in Italy, but um, Conquest, as as I knew it by Lucio Fulci. Who, uh, it, uh, it, it, is that is that the one where they are like in the uh, Iron Age or Bronze Age and they're like looking for steel or something? I kind of I kind of remember the title somehow. It's, it's, yeah. they're, they're like barbarians or, or primitive mm-hmm. people, are they? Let, let me Google it. Is the uh, one with I, the hairy four people in it? Um, I remember a scene yeah. with, with there was like a conquest like sort by of Fulci. Yeah. yeah, which is <laughs> conquest is not bad. It's just weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this was the time. The eighties. Like, it came. You know, it came out was... in. Um. It came out in. It came out in eighty three. Um. And fortunately, I I can't find any um alt any alternate name. The only um alternate names I could I could find was in um was in Sp- was the uh, spent was the Spanish name. Um. Mm-hmm. I got what's called conquest in mm-hmm. it in it too. Yeah, uh, the one with the wolf man. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I I kind of remember that. Yeah. 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 I I I've, I've certainly seen it. And the th- the uh, thing, like I said, it's it's definitely weird, and it's it's de- it was definitely um. Out of a bit out of character for so, for somebody like Lucio Fulci, whose nickname that that I've always known him as is the Godfather of Gore. Yeah, like that's that's kind that's kind of what yeah. he's that's kind of what he's been known for for a good chunk of his career is more horror stuff than um, yeah horror. Than yeah, yeah, yeah very very gore horror. Yeah. That's not yeah. to say you can't have horror and fantasy. I mean, Dark Souls has been a thing, and that and. And that manages to do it pretty well. Um, I think that in that period, fantasy, uh, Jordan sorcery were just uh, like very popular, and mm-hmm. basically everyone uh, 
tempted to do their own thing. But yeah, uh, or, or you, um, you surely remember the three bladed uh, sword from uh, what, what's uh, Hulk the Slayer? I, I don't remember what, which one. You know, there's a guy that mm-hmm. has this sword with three blades and he can shoot them. That, that was wholesome. Yeah. Back when, when I saw it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, remember, remember, I remember that. Um, and uh, give, the sword and the sorcerer. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that, that. Yeah. And even 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 with all even with all that, you've um, was there during the during the early development of Against the Dark Master? Was there and was there um any consi- consideration of Ad- of um of ta- of taking what you had and applying it to role master as a whole or what or did you guys have it set from the beginning that you wanted to lean more towards the simplified approach in middle earth role playing we I think it was uh, I think it was uh, more burp right Mark? I mean we were yeah we were more uh, yeah yeah definitely because I re- I remember we um, uh, we we all met um, online playing um, or discussing on the forums and on the other boards uh, about Rollmaster, Merp, uh, and the like. And we started to play together uh, always online. Mm-hmm. And we we started collecting our house rules for for Merp because we. We were going to play Merp, and at some point we realized that we basically uh, had rewritten the whole game. Basically, <laughs> so so we said just like uh, you know what, it, we, we we could just make our own game with you know as an homage to Merp, but really something different from uh, from the game itself. Yeah. So. So the, we yeah we started more as a merp the thing than a role master mm-hmm. <laughs> thing. And when it come now when it comes to when it, when it came to so when it came to some of those house rules, um, we can we kind of talked about this one as as you're as you probably know by now. Um, about a mu- about a month or so ago, I covered um, Merp's second edition, yeah. and I had I had said that it's one of th- one of the things I had said was that it was a very of its time approach with the segmented mechanics. Mm-hmm. Was one of the first house rules that you guys tried to tackle to try and unify a bunch of those subsystems? Yes, I uh, yes, we yeah yeah I think that for. Um... Uh, Merp and the first editions of, of Pearl Master was that uh, everything has its own mechanic, basically, its mm-hmm. own table, or very, very, you, very often very similar. Uh, it's the, the, the underlying mechanic is always that you roll a, a percentile dice and, and add your bonus mm-hmm. most of the time. But uh, yes, there are different numbers, different penalties, different bonuses uh, to add, you have to look different things. So yeah, we we try to uh, you know, streamline it and try to, to unify the, the mechanics for, uh, for the game. Yep. And when it comes, when it I've seen some people. I had seen some people ask why I got why I got on the whole segmented thing, and you do hit the nail on the head because a lot of those separate mechanics are are similar enough, and I'd say that sort of segmentation is a consequence of Rollmaster's origins. Because keep yeah, in mind, the, keep so. in mind, Rollmaster started out as a um AD and D hack that kind of evolved into its own <laughs> thing. Um, yeah. That we started with uh, arms low, if I remember correctly. Then yes. that bit, bit by bit. Um, I think it's very, very interesting. Uh, 
it's also um, uh, I think representative from that time of uh, of game design. There were lots of games that just started as hacks of Dungeons and Dragons. You know, you got uh, Rollmaster, you got uh, Arduin, and there are many others uh, that were basically just uh, D&D acts at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And, and in some, some way, uh, it's, it's getting back there, you know, and now with the uh, old school renaissance uh, movement, there are a lot, lot of people who are trying to do different things. Yeah. Starting from the Dungeons and Dragons rules. Yeah, when so, when it comes to when it comes to the old school Renaissance, personally, the the thing that I'm most interested in is what could be called neo clones. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So where, basically, the oh the a re, a um a retro clone is just ta- is just taking say an old say an older system and then just updating the formatting to make sh- to uh, to modern standards but keeping the by keeping the rule set largely the same a neo clone is one that's um ca- that's kind of taking the old and um putting a new spin on it yeah I, yeah i, I think, think, those, I think those um, are the most interesting yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm with you there. It's uh, it's uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, I agree with you. It's mm-hmm. it's more um, you know, that a, a a new a new look into certain um mechanics, you know, and you know the game with time evolved, so uh, you need to uh, you know stay in the uh, the same pace of uh, the game as the game changed, so. I think it's also a very interesting. Of, mm-hmm. uh, it's a way of of seeing, uh, you know, what people uh, are playing and how are how they are playing the game. Because uh, in in some way, um, even against the Dark Master, is basically uh, was written with the idea with the idea of you know uh, teaching the other people. This is our way of playing the game. So. It's kind of an extraction manual for of, of this sort. This is a, a, our take mm-hmm. on on the rules, how 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 we do it, and yeah, I think it's uh, uh, neo clones are are something like that too. Yeah. Now, I can. The other um. The other thing, the other thing with Merp that I that I um had hi- that I had highlighted when I covered it was the magic problem. Now, at the time, I had said that it's not a bad magic system. It was just a it was just an unfitting magic system for something that's trying to be Middle Earth with how low magic a lot of Middle Earth actually is, or rather, magic is everywhere, but it's more subtle. Um. And. Yeah. Of course, and because of the whole spell list thing that um, that Rollmaster has, spells could get out of hand. Was that something that you guys um, had a problem with as as well and wanted to address? Yes, I mean mm, we wanted to uh, keep the system similar to Merp and mm-hmm. Rollmaster. So in fact, we still have. Uh, Spell list basically, even be fair, call the spell over. Like, they work slightly differently, but they're very similar. And but we also wanted magic to be more similar to what you see in Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. and The Hobbit. It's actually quite quite difficult to, to put a um, uh, finger, you know, on on how magical is uh, Middle Earth because it it tends to vary with with, uh, with its book. You know, in the Hobbit, Gandalf is throwing uh, fireballs and lightning bolts uh, uh, right and left, while yeah. in, then... in, in Lord of the Ring, it basically doesn't cast 
uh, any spell at all or, or, or nearly any spell. So we, we tried to do, we, we tried to uh, uh, tone down uh, the magic a little, make it more subtle. Mm -hmm. And you still have the fireball, you still have your lightning bolts, but we try to make them uh, less appealing to to the players. And we try to uh, make wizards and enemies, which are the over big spellcaster of the game, and uh, are like, you know, something like a druid or a life uh, mage mm -hmm. and um, we, we try to make them more like uh, controllers of the battlefield than uh, than pure you know dps as they say yeah uh, today basically they they're not damage dealers they're more uh, helpers and movers of the of the battlefield. Where yeah. are you? So, yeah. So, basically, we that, that's the direction we we went to. Also, we keep keep in mind that we wanted the the game to be flexible enough to be played in other. Uh, settings, so ju not just speed alert, but for example, the, the Wheel of Time or obviously your own fantasy setting. So we gave some options to customize your magic, make it, make it more low magic setting or uh, uh, boost it up a bit, depend on, on what you'd like to play. Mm -hmm. And when now, when it comes to now, when it came when it came to the um, the fact that you get that from that even even with all the stuff changing, you, this is still having the DNA of of the of the old Merp. Um, You've prob um you've probably heard the whole, the whole the whole spiel about how Mer about how Merp is too crunchy. Um, how what's what's been your what's been your response to that or or how or how you tend to mitigate some of the um, crunchier elements within Merp and Rollmaster? Well, I think that I mean, and and, and I'm I'm speaking as a as a as an expert in pro master and merp as max is so i'm gonna go before him to give a little bit of a more like a, a, a an amateur <laughs> response because i'm not he's like a professional player in role master <laughs> but uh i think that um there's one thing it's true it's very crunchy as a system however um the i don't think the learning the learning curve it's um, too steep I mean, it is a little bit steep, but um, I think that once you um, get used to certain mechanics, the mechanics repeat mm -hmm. kind of itself throughout the whole game, and uh, um, especially the fact that you use only two dice. And um, uh, it's, it's, I think it's easier for uh, a, a noob or a person that first starts playing um, uh, to get used to, uh, you know, just roll your dice and add that bonus. That's all you have to do, uh, pretty much. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. there's more to it, but um, I think uh, um, the crunch uh, it's easy too, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, and uh, it's easy to eventually, uh, after two or three sessions, to get um, more accustomed to the mechanics and, and to the logic of the game. I think logically, Merp especially made a lot of sense in terms of, um, you know, the mechanics uh room master too uh but room master has much more especially the combat system was much crunchier and i think that max and tom did a good job in make mm -hmm. uh against dark master um combat system um 
and I'm talking about the part, not the charge part. So not the you know critical and the, the attack tables. I'm talking about the the flow, of the combat to make it more um, um, fluid, more more um, skinny, if it makes sense. You know, it's not like the Pro Master combat was extremely crunchy. Um, instead of against love like, crunch game. I, I, no, no, I, we I, love I, crunch game. Yeah. I, love crunch, I, I, I personally love crunch game. But, you know, I love uh, the crunch game too, but sometimes I feel that uh, they look for crunchiness just for the sake of crunchiness. Yes, yeah. I, it, of... I think I think uh, Nick is right. It, but I mean, that's um, that's complex and that's uh, difficult, basically. So, uh, yeah, we 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 try to to design a game that had a certain degree of complexity without being too difficult to learn. So if we have done our job right <laughs> against the Dark Master, it will be uh, relatively easy to get into. In fact, the, uh, the core mechanic, well, that's just one core mechanic, as mm -hmm. Nick was saying, that just roll your dice and add your bounce and that's it and there's uh, some sp some space for uh, system mastery to learn and optimize your tractor learn the, the various options that you can have in the game but the um, the the core of the game is actually, it's actually pretty simple and then it it's it's kind of like a layered cake, you know. Each each layer adds something, so you you can start very basic, and use only the uh, one layer, and then when you're ready, you slowly add the the others. So uh, so basically, it's complex, but but not difficult. That that mm -hmm. what was we are trying to to achieve. And there is a there is a, a logic, you know, throughout the whole. You know the mechanics are logically kind of put together, right, Max? Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing that I, I think uh, um, Tom and Nick uh, did a wonderful job with the with the layout, and is that how it helps uh, you get the get the rules of the game? How 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 it helps you? Uh, learn the game because one of the problems in Merp and Rollmaster is that rules were all over the place. I, I I seriously don't know how how we I ever managed to make uh, uh, my first Merp chapter because when I reread the 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 book. Uh, when we started to work on against the Dark Master, it's serious. It's like you, you start and they, we, start, we start talking of things they never mentioned before, and then they give you a reference that's like half a book over, and you're constantly jumping <laughs> from one section to another. It, it's very confusing. But, uh, tell, I mean, I managed to make it my character, and I love <laughs> the game. So it's probably just my old brain now that that's that's too tired to to think. But um, yeah, I think it is um, what part of what gives Rollmaster his uh, uh, infamous name of Chart Master or Rule Monster. I I, I heard it called from time to time is basically mostly in the organization of, of the rule. Yeah. The rules are were, were very, very disorganized. Well, yes, like, like, I, like I said, like I said, um, role master is of its time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, 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 um, uh, 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 and I think the, the I think that, that uh, what you said before, Mildred, that uh is part of a reason why why what it is so so i mean the um, it came from like a, like a process basically it was not written as a as a 
as a game from the first play, but more as a series of add-ons for Dungeons and Dragons. So that's probably why it was so disorganized, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, and definitely we, we were um, uh, laying out the, the, you know, everything, the layout. And, and I always found that every single um, uh, core rules, a core book that I was holding my hand, it was, I always felt very dreadful uh, picking a character because you get to the end and, and you're still missing something important. And uh, we try to include uh, uh, and, and give also uh, visual tools. Like um, uh, toward the end, we realized that maybe we can be even more uh, thorough in, in providing the information of where to find uh, everything. So as many games do, it's not that we reinvented the wheel here. Uh, we make this, we made this, um, um, you know, um, we lay out the the, the character sheet with uh, and every single every single box in the character sheet has a reference in the book and then the in the where to find that specific information when you create your character or you know even after when you are looking for certain information. So, um, and I think one of the biggest compliments we got and it is a big compliment for us, is that uh, character creation is very neat. And uh, I think that a lot of people recognize uh, a big feat in that mm -hmm. because, uh, um, you know, a lot of time you want to start the game. And a lot of time people just enjoy creating characters. You know, yeah. a lot of the, how many times, you know, you sit down and get a book and you create your character. It just, just, it was like, just like when you used to play Magic and you used just create your deck. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. And, um, and I think it's very enjoyable. It's very... Uh, um, uh, it's, there, there's a lot of um, customization in the in the character creation, and you can really like what, just reading a section of the book would give you idea what character you can create. And I think that's a great thing that you can just you know sit down with the background um, option that you have, and from there build up your character, the character you want, mm -hmm. and uh, that gives a lot of uh, sense of wonder, which I think sometimes it's lost. Certain games that are very you know, maybe either too, they leave too much room to imagination in creating your character, or they give you not enough room to create your own character. I think Max and Tom, but of course, my suggestions, which are always key, <laughs> uh, uh, they, they were able to create a very um, balanced mm -hmm. uh, character creation in terms of uh, what you can, you know, pull out of it. Out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's interesting that you mentioned that whole too too much or too too little. Um, what what would count? What would constitute giving too much? And what would constitute giving too too um, little? Since you guys well, are trying to I, go for a middle ground between I, those two. I think that uh, certain games that give you um, like either a very little amount of restriction, like I would talk. I'm thinking about uh, you know um, very story driven games, which I enjoy a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, you know, you, it's, everything is based on the fiction. So, uh, if a person has done experience with role play game and, and, and the points of the fiction and the concept of the fiction, it's very hard to create a character. And I talk I'm talking out of my own experience because I remember, um, uh, when I was, uh, I was, maybe it was like my, it was playing, uh, it was at the time of the Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 edition. And the, my friend mm -hmm. that used to play with us came um, uh, with this game. I don't remember the game. One of the first games they used to have all uh, uh, six face day dices, you know, and it was very story driven. So a lot of talking, and I was with, I wasn't able to wrap my head around it, yeah. and I was very frustrated because uh, why, why, why there's no role for these and that. And eventually, you know, I got into it. I understand it better, 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 and I enjoy it. So uh, that's what I'm saying when you have too much freedom that, you know, that they, they say, okay, you have these four stats and you can do whatever you want. And that it can be overwhelming for someone, you know, especially someone that is used to certain type of games. Mm -hmm. uh, and also in certain games, they, they, they don't give you a lot of um, room to create your character. Like, you know, the choice are limited because of uh, sometimes I'm talking about those games are more um, connected to a specific setting. So in, in order for you to work well in that setting, you have to re reduce the amount of choices. Uh, we, we, we tried to do 
so, something like that with, with Dark Master to, to, mm-hmm. to tell the truth. We, um, I think that one of the main differences between Role Master and Dark Master is that Role Master is a great um, generic fantasy system. Now, you, you can play uh, in any setting, in any fantasy setting you, you like with, with Role Master. Mm-hmm. Obviously, some will work slightly better than, than others, but if your GM is willing and your group is willing to work on the rules, you can basically do anything. While we, against the Dark Master, we try to emulate a very specific uh, subgenre of, of fantasy, which is the epic fantasy sagas like Lord of the Rings or uh, the Belgaria, the you know, classic. A group of people go on a quest mm-hmm. to defeat the Dark Lord. And so, as, as Nick was saying, basically, we we try to uh, be quite specific without restriction, restricting the player's options too much because uh, we want still wanted to, to give you the freedom to do whatever you'd like. But at the same time, we wanted the, the characters to be the, you know, the characters you, you'd find in a epic fantasy novel. So there are, uh, I think, I think we, we were, we were talking about this in the, in the last, uh, last interview, mm-hmm. uh, weren't we, right? Because I remember saying something yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you, you, you can't play Tiefling in, <laughs> in Against the Dark Master. Uh, so yeah, you, you, you won't be able to, to play um, exactly... Uh, you, you, won't, you won't be given the option of playing uh, any character you, you may come up with. But you will be given lots of options to create your uh, character that could possibly in a epic fantasy novel. I don't know yes. if it makes sense. Know, Does it yeah, make and sense? Also, mm-hmm. And also, uh, Max included tools to um, create your cultures and kings and yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if you at the end, if you if you think that. Um, you know, the setting uh, uh, general and very loose guidelines that we put inside the game, because there's not a defined setting. The setting is inferred. Um, you know, don't fit your style of play. Uh, there are all the tools for you to come up with your own and, uh, you know, create your own kin, kins, which is, you know, uh, just another word for race and cultures. Yeah. Um, uh, so... I mean, you can really, uh, you can, can really, can, you are free to um, experience the game in any um, way you want and in any setting you want. But you know, first, when we're thinking it, uh, we were thinking for a high fan. I mean, we we created. I mean, uh, yeah, we created the game that we would like to play in the way we would like to play it. But we all have different styles of play, especially Max and Tom. <laughs> So, uh, you know, they were able to come up with uh, that, that kind of, you know, uh, uh, disagreement uh, kind of create a, a better, you know, uh, it's like, a, you know, uh, created a better game, a better, had different views, brings to something better. It's a competition, you know, mm-hmm. if it makes sense. I don't know oh, yeah. My... <laughs> okay, good, good. Like it. Don't worry. Don't worry too much about about your English. Um, bel- believe me, I have exp- I have experience on that. Um, but when, like, when it came to um, the whole the whole idea of being of being an epic fa- of being an epic fantasy. Now, epic is a term that ends up getting a little bit overused, in my in my opinion, these days. Um, but what, what is it, what is it to you that, um, 
that would that defines epic fantasy um be as opposed as opposed to other, as opposed to other styles of fantasy okay so uh, the uh, what what we call epic fantasy mm -hmm. uh, um has some some What's gonna go? Can I answer? I have a I have a yeah, answer ready. <laughs> so okay, so uh, I think that what defines besides you know the the the, the trope of a, of a high fantasy that has that epic you know um, uh, a fight you know mm -hmm. uh, I would say good versus evil, but I uh, you know that black and white has a lot of shade of gray in the middle. Um, what that, that makes it epic, <clears throat> it's that. Um, when uh, when we were you know initially uh, brainstorming uh, the game, we all agreed that the most beautiful feature that we all experienced in the, you know role and Merp, it was you know at that moment where you are about to die and your role open ended, and kill the you know uh, the the villain that you're fighting against, mm -hmm. uh, and and we all have such a fun memories of those specific moments, especially me. And often it's just me failing because I'm, I'm famous for that. So, you know, the most important moment I fail. Um, uh, th that it's epic. We wanted to give the, the we want um, to include certain mechanics, certain features in the game that at the right moment, the, uh, the game gives you the tool to be epic, which often you don't find like in other games. Like I remember that one of my biggest complaints about Dungeons and Dragon uh, the three, which I, I'm referring to the three and three point five because of Dungeons and Dragon that I uh, play the most and maybe enjoy the least <laughs> of the Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. I'm a kind of big back me kind of guy, uh, but I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragon three point five. Yeah, and uh, um, there was the lack of uh, that epic, you know, that you were mm -hmm. uh, there and you were just rolling it. The, you know, your D20 over and over again, and it would kind of get numb to it. Uh, and uh, I think that, and when I started to play the role master, I immediately felt a different uh, tingling in my hands every time I rolled the die because I felt like that, you know, they could change something or something could go back. So every roll count. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that um, Max. And Tom did a great job and have that come through the game, especially we you know with all the passions and drive points mechanics where you know uh, gives you a chance to uh, for a reason uh, that is uh, linked to your character background or character uh, design idea mm -hmm. to give you a chance to uh, succeed in a very epic way, which is something that you find often in literature, you know that yeah. often you see in movies that, the hero wins because has that push from the drive inside of him because that's the moment I have to shine and 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 we gave you this tool to shine and you know uh i think that um that's what defines ethics um uh in the game if max agrees with me yeah um now when i can now that whole not feeling epic with um with 3.5, I can definitely understand that. I'd um, I'd say that's a consequence of the fact that D and D can't nail down exactly what style of fantasy it is, and I'm, and as much as I sound like a broken record when it comes to that kind of thing, I'm gonna keep saying it as long as it keeps applying because it applied back th it applied back then, and it still applies. Yep. I think uh, I think that um. They try to please too many mouth, mouths, yeah. you know, in terms of taste. And uh, that kind of, you know, uh, I think that I, personally I don't find it appealing anymore. And again, I mean, I, every time I, I grab my back me book, my, yeah. I have my encyclopedia, I enjoy that, that mood that comes out of the game. And I'm, and I'm okay to, get, to look through, you know, all the... All the um, faulty mechanics that the game has, um, especially with the modern eye, you know, that game didn't age very well. But uh, I maybe for nostalgia, maybe because, you know, that's the 
accepted the accepted deal, but there's something more uh, uh, fantasy naive in the old back me. The 3.5 was too mathematical, too cold, and too miniature based, um, and it wanted to be too many things without being one. And that, that was a you know when 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 you then you and I was an, an I was playing for many years, and I but I, just, I could say that I only play you know, TSR games mm -hmm. and Dungeons and & Dragons and, uh, until Tom brought me to play with uh, Dungeons & Dragons. I mean, the uh, role master mm -hmm. that uh, opened up my mind uh, and uh, I understand, you know, the importance of uh, how beautiful our epic game can be. And when it comes... Now, when it comes to... When it comes to some of the stuff that you guys are adding with against the Dark Master, this is the part where I have to I have to ask about one particular tagline that's been burned into my head for the for the last six months. Make criticals hurt again. <laughs> so, first question: Whose idea was that? I think it was Tom' idea. <laughs> I, I uh, was it? I think so. Or, or was it yours? I don't remember. I don't know. It sounds like something I would say, but uh, it might be Tom. I don't want to take credit for something that it's not. Uh... I see. We had this image of the of Gandra, the the elf. That's this, he's, he's just uh, slashing uh, at an orc, and uh, and the. The tagline just. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, it was, it was funny. Yeah, it seemed, seemed just perfect for it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that, you know, um, uh, again, you see all these games where a critical is, uh, I think it's uh, underused. <laughs> I'm actually overused in terms of. You know the criticals. You roll a you roll your dice. You get a critical. You open the critical. There's all this complex mechanic to obtain the critical, and then you five hit points. All right. Uh, wait a Is that a critical for real? Um, Meanwhile, you know, in the master, even the lowest level character, if 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 lucky enough, with uh, the dice, and uh, no, not only on only. only Linked to luck, but also the bonuses the way you spend and and build your character yeah. can lead uh, to something that you know critical are critical. <laughs> so well, that that and everybody lo everybody loves seeing the gruesomeness from the critical hit tables. Um, <laughs> but I remember I remember that with Rollmaster and Max, maybe you had a similar experience. A lot of the times encounters ended up being a race to who was going to crit first, which yeah. Meant which um, ultimately meant that just doing regular damage didn't mean as much. Um, yeah. Did you ever have that kind of experience, and how did you want to address that with against the Dark Master? Yeah, I, I remember the most dreadful result in Rollmaster wasn't uh, you do the instant death or uh, you getting lots of damage or penalties from the critical strike. It was uh, the stunned result, or stunned without parry, was even worse, mm -hmm. because you basically you were basically out of the fight, and you were like uh, just a, a punchable for for your for your opponent basically for for the rest of the fight. Because when you're stunned in master, you can't attack. You you can defend if you are not stunned. Uh, Without parry, obviously, uh, but you can do little else. So that that was one of the first problem we tried to resolve in Dark Master, and we did that mm -hmm. by limiting the time uh, you your character could be could stay stunned. So in I guess with Dark Master you'll. Uh, you can still be stunned. You are a little more uh, able to act in Dark Master, I think, than Hero Master. When you're when you're stunned, you you can still do something, mm -hmm. and uh, you will be stunned for uh, uh, normally for just one round. 
so you're out of the fight for one round you're forced to fight defensively but then you you get back basically yeah. so you you uh, it's not you you don't skip a turn because you you still get to hack the, somehow but mm -hmm. you you're forced to, you force them your on the defensive which uh, and also i think that um in, in some some somehow in, introduce uh the idea that uh, many times, especially in certain modern modern uh, role play game systems, that you need to defend. Like the the the, the power oh. can be lethal, so yeah. you need to you need to be careful. It's a, a the strategy. Um, generally, I think I feel that the newest game, the strategy is all about you know where you put your miniature. <laughs> Instead, uh, um, in against Dark Master, the strategy is more like right, how you're gonna you know balance your attack with your defense the pairing uh, uh how, you know uh, how can you take advantage of the you know the, the um, uh ground then you can find some cover um and you know it's you know you have to keep in consideration what is the armor you're wearing because the armor it doesn't just give you uh, and i'm saying this for maybe who's not who's listening but it's not um used to uh, role master or Merp or against Dark Master, because generally the the, the armor armor just give you an extra number that you have to subtract to the attack for the instead of an against Dark Master, it's moved offsets the type of damage you're gonna uh, get. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, that you know to keep in consideration when you're going to combat. There's a whole series of 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 notion that you have to know your character, so it gives you. Amplify the amplifies your choices, and, and I think it, it, it plays in a way that gives you more chance to play the character in your own way. Not in there's no one good way. Mm -hmm. There's many ways, and uh, you know, and you understand what I'm saying. Right? You yeah. you have to own your character. You have to know your character. You know, you have to know the limits of your character. You have to know the the strength of your character in order to succeed. But you are the one that kind of said those things when you create your character. Your character, you're gonna kill all the characters before you get this right. But once mm -hmm. you do, you know you're gonna be able to uh, exploit more of what your character can do. So I think that's another great feat of the game. Uh, but you know, uh, like every game, you you need to you, you need to get to know it. Yeah, I think and, well, uh, the, the the important part is that in what, what what we wanted to achieve with uh, against the dark master is also to uh, learn to pick your fight uh, and uh, fight only when it really matters to you only when you really can't avoid it because uh, as you said uh, fighting is is dangerous and it will get you killed if you're not careful so uh, your first response should have be uh, fighting and th that's one that's one of the things we we think uh, um, the games models after uh, many uh, epic fantasy sagas uh, because in like the Lord of the Rings, if you uh, go and go through all of it, basically, mm -hmm. the protagonists are almost always running away from fights. They, well, the, the hobbits run away from the Nazgul school because, well, that, uh, they, they're that's not... a bit that's a bit self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, and they ride. Uh, um, well, even with Aragorn, they just uh, fight um, uh, enough to to be able to get away from them, and then they run from the orcs in uh, Moria. They run from the Baldur. They run from the Urukai. They they keep running away from it, almost uh, uh, the entire first half of the books, and then you get to the proper uh, proper war you know and battles where they obviously can't run away mm -hmm. uh, i think that w what's important here is that they don't fight if it's not necessary and that's 
something we wanted to keep in, in against the Dark Master. Fighting is dangerous, and you, you should fight only if, to, if it really means something to you. Because if it means something, you, we go back to the passions and drive system. So if it, mm-hmm. if it means sense, uh, uh, something to your character, you'll get drive points for fighting. And you can use these drive points to uh, modify your dice rolls in your favor. So basically, uh, by fighting when uh, uh, your character is, should be invested in, in the outcome of the fight, it will become easier for you to survive. Yeah. Now, when it comes now, um, when you mentioned stunt, when you mentioned stunning earlier, I would, I um, I had, I had to ask, did you ever have any instance where there were some stun locking problems, i.e., somebody just kept getting stunned? Yes, yes, yes. We it was one. Uh, I don't know, Nick, uh, how many times we rewarded and uh, revised the... Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that was the hardest um, balancing... Uh, I mean, it was the hardest rule to balance mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Uh, you don't want to make it too harsh because stun lock sucks, let's be honest. Like, if you get stun lock, um, you're basically out of the fight, you're most likely going to die, um, and uh, it's a very unfair... <laughs> <laughs> it's very unfair because it's kind of the game decides to kill you and uh, it doesn't give you any chance. Mm-hmm. So um, I feel that, especially if you get like, you know, multiple rounds of stunning, mm-hmm. um, uh, you, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, you, you just get, went to the combat to fight, you know, and uh, I think it's, a, it's, I think it's, a, it's um it's a bug in the game the the stun mechanic in um, uh, Merp and uh, Rollmaster I think it were they were a little bugged quite honestly because uh, uh, this is a game you have to have fun and of mm. course you have to own your decisions but uh, stun lock it's something that is just frustrating and, yeah. and ruins the game for the player because you know uh, uh, it's okay you decide to fight you know you make the decision but Sound lock at the first round, the heck. I mean, I'm out of the. I mean, it's unfair, and um, and the way we yeah, the way we max more than unfair because you're um, you yeah you're, you're basically locked out of decision. We I think yeah. we we it's it's one of the rules we play tested more with with uh, even with uh, you know new bias and some blind thing play yeah. testing. We we try to say to to have us pay particular attention to to these rules, or or we we paid particular attention to the reports when uh, to this rule in the reports when when uh, when they play test of the game for us. So yeah, yeah, we stun locked the cord in the mm-hmm. early iterations of the game. But I think we are out of it now. <laughs> yeah. It should it shouldn't happen. If if you are stun locked in against the Dark Master now, it means you shouldn't be fighting. <laughs> I mean it means the, the opponent is way above you and 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 um, it's something is going very wrong and you should be uh, you know how Gandalf say, fly you fool. <laughs> yeah. Although when I look at the book I um I see one. I see one thing miss. I see one crucial thing not there that um, that uh, that I ha- that I have to point out, and I ha- I unfortunately have to follow my rules on and chastise you guys for. Where's the damn index? <laughs> <laughs> that I, I think you you got the the old version. No, the, yeah, it, there's it, a new version that has the index. A new oh. version that has the index. So uh, what we, happened is... Uh, we will be uploading it uh, the, later tonight or, or tomorrow. No, no, no. The, 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 if, you, if you go on the drive through right now, there is a, a version with the index, yeah. But, Which, and if you want... okay, okay, good good save on that front, because if there wasn't an index in there, then I'd probably have to no, rip no, you guys a, a new one. Just, just that, um, uh, you... the, index, uh, the index on InDesign, it's... Uh, 
probably the worst thing that Adobe ever designed. And if Adobe is listening to this, mm -hmm. guys, I'm <laughs> talking to you. Your index sucks. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but really sucks because it's a, uh, um, it's extremely, um, it, it's 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 well known. When I when I got into the, the index, I was like, are you kidding me? Like almost Word makes a better job here, the indexing stuff. But anyway, uh, it was a very gruesome activity yeah, I that I would suggest <laughs> anybody to do. I know but it's one. I know it's one of those things that is that is hard, that is hard to deal with. But at the same at the same time, um, I am full, I I am of the belief that putting an index in books will save people a lot of oh, headaches. You 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 you, yeah. uh, you will be very happy with the index because the index that we index that we made uh, when because Max was the one that actually lined out all the items that have to be in the index. I mean, there was the one that I just tagged them. Mm -hmm. But he made a good job in uh, of use the index also as a kind of sort of a organized type of content, a more an enhanced type of content. So yeah. when you go through the index, you also, you know, um, it, all the reference cross reference are very well made, and um, it, it's gonna, you know, give you a third dimension to the to the to, you know to the book. So. Give us a day um, and recheck your drive through account. Yeah, I just I just did I just did, and okay. yeah, it's there. So, don't worry, don't worry, guys. You're you are safe from the monk's wrath this time. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. I was uh, I was getting scared, uh, Mildred. Not gonna lie. <laughs> no, yeah, especially with a book this large uh, and indexes. Yeah, no, we would but... never we would never release something without an index. Just that uh, the first um, the first release was. Um, you know, also to have feedback immediately because mm -hmm. we were getting close to the, the the date that we wanted to send to the pub to the to the printer printer. Uh, so I mean, we've, um, we we just wanted to have the most feedback possible to uh, because we know that now we're not gonna print a book without errors. I mean, there's gonna be typos, there's gonna be little things, but as long as just typos, you know, everybody's fine with it. We don't want everything everything to have any uh, rule that it doesn't match or page doesn't match the, the type of content, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we, um, you know, um, immediately release um, a version with the index. Actually, Max, don't we? Didn't we? Why do you have one with the index? The first one was with the index, Max. Mm -hmm. But we. The first yeah. one did not first have one an. Did... First one does not have an index. Have... Yeah. I think we had you, you know, with between with index when can't believe we, that uh, yeah yeah I think the index was was fixed to like uh, the uh, version after that one the one point one that was released like the one that you got was released on Friday and Monday it was already one the, the index so sorry about that <laughs> um sorry about I that. to know that it was Nick fault anyway so of yeah. course go ahead yeah. Like and me, as usual. yeah, yeah. Now that now that look, um, large books have to live and die by their by their navigation. Um, <laughs> yeah. And just to make sure that just make sure that nobody thinks I'm singling you guys out. Um, I get on everybody whether what what on the whole notion of having an index. No, ex like. I may be an ass, but I am an equal opportunity ass. Yeah. Um. Also, I do. I I will admit I got a bit of a I got a bit of a chuckle out of the "Can you cast that spell?" flowchart. <laughs> oh, you touching you touching a, a sore a sore topic here because that chart yeah. that chart was designed by Max, which by no by using the word design. I'm like giving a lot of credit. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, uh, I, I have no artistic skill at all. No, I, no, I can no. draw, you know, stick figures at, at, at most. In, so, in my uh, best days. Was, so was you this, even, did you end up making this in mind map originally, and then handing and then handing it off to off to Nick and and say add this to the book? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. uh, uh, so yeah. Yeah. But if I, I show you, if I show I you the original, 
think there are something like that. If I show you the for the original the original chart he gave me, probably the chart is asking, you know, please kill me. I don't want to be a chart anymore. <laughs> uh, it was that bad. So you know, taking that uh, and making him something so pretty, I think it, I think uh, uh, it came out to be a good uh, looking chart right now, right? Uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, sure. I, I found diamonds and shit. Let's say that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Max is, uh, Max knows I'm kidding. He, he, you know, he's not required to, uh, design. That's our job, you know? He gives us something, we have to make it better. Um, and let's not go over the way he, uh, writes the, the, the you know, he writes some words that the extra returns that he puts. And the fact that I had to remove, uh, you have no idea. So, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. we love him for what he is. <laughs> Max, I love you. <laughs> yeah, I, get... I love him. Yeah. Um, I just get the feeling that the, that that flow that that flow chart was part was partially made because pe- because people kept a- people kept um, getting it wrong about whether or not they could cast a spell or sometimes try and see if they could get away with casting a spell that they shouldn't be able to. Yeah, I mean, that's what goes under those tools that I was saying before. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what <laughs> that, uh, that just, you know, if you, uh, if you give, um, you know, these kind of tools, people learn to play the game and they play more. So and that's all, uh, and that, that, that chart has uh, some of my players' names on it. I mean, uh, <laughs> Are, you know, I've made that chart for you. You you mm-hmm. can't and you don't know how to cast your spell <laughs> now. You can pretend you forgot uh, you 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 weren't supposed to cast the spell ten level higher than yours. <laughs> so yeah. now now you have that chart. You you, you cannot miss it. That uh, mm-hmm. chart is foolproof. No yeah. doubt about that. Um, now I know, I know now, congrats on getting the, um, getting the book out in in PDF form. And I know, I realize that 2020 has been a fucking hellhole, but what would you say would be a, would be a release window you're shooting for, for the printed version of the book? Uh, Uh, I can play video games again. (laughs) I, 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 Uh, I think we 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 sent the the files to a printer like yesterday. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. So we 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 uh, the process. You know, um, this is our this is the first book we ever published, and, and this is not a book. It's a manual. So it, you know, it has a lot of um, the, the 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 way things are explained and laid out. Um, it, it's not just like a regular book that you you know you have words chapter on top and page on the bottom and everything is the same. So we don't know what could go wrong for now. So the the, the, the printer is going to be in touch with us. They know it's our first time. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're going to be in touch with us, give us proof. So we have to, so we don't know how, uh, we, oh, we, of course, we want to have, everybody wants to have a perfect product. So um, uh, right now, I right think now, the, uh, the, an idea, I mean, the, the, the printer gave us, gave us some uh, plausible dates. Plausible. Yeah, I would say probably, hopefully, um, you know, in the next um, in November, December, probably we'll be able to have all the books uh, shipped. But you know, this is not a promise. This is a this just is so, a, just something to just something to distract every, everybody from the from the thought of having to eat fruit cake. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's exactly. So you can you know, and I remember that, and that there will be it will be great. Mm-hmm. If I have to be honest with you, to ha- hold the books in, in your hand, because I got my first back me the red box for Christmas. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, I always associate um, that, you know, Christmas to role play game sort of, you know, getting new stuff because I used to put all my all my Christmas list, you know, all the books and role play game and everything that, so Christmas kind of I associate when I was a little kid, you know, 10, 11 to role play game. 
And um, so it would be great if, if for this Christmas I will I'll make ourselves this gift, you know, <laughs> holding the, the book that we that we design and, and, and from top to bottom and all this time that we put on. And also, you know, 2020 has a little bit of um, um, yeah. impact on us too because you know, I, I have two, 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 two small children, the toddlers, so that they, they had to stop to go to school. And I have you know, full-time job, so you know I have to balance everything. No, I'm not complaining or anything. Everybody has to went through the same thing. So definitely, the pandemic and the lockdown has a little bit of a effect, at least on my workflow. I don't know. I don't. I don't know about Max and Tom, but mm-hmm. um, definitely, if it's the slowdown, it's partially my fault because you know, uh, working and uh-huh. with the kids Good. at home. Uh-huh. I know. I always said that uh, I was always open for that, but you know, they no, never listened to me. So. <laughs> no, no, it's been a bitch. So yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I can't wait until it's over. It's a, the 2020 brought a huge critical on us. Let's put it this way. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Um, we're very excited. So we send the we send the the files yesterday. We reviewed it to to. I mean, I can review it more. Like I think that we had few. I, I actually, let me take this. Um, chance to give a big shout out to the community that is mm-hmm. uh, coming up around against Dark Master because um, we thought that, and it was, the, the, um, the PDF release was, you know, as close as the perfection we could have at that specific moment, but the community made, brought it to the next level in terms of finding uh, in terms of suggestions and finding uh, little mistakes that we overlooked because you know we, we've been looking at this document for almost three years right now this specific one for a year now so you know certain things they don't they don't caught your eyes anymore and uh instead you know new eyes helped us a lot um mm-hmm. find all these um imperfections and, and which late led to uh, i think a very very good uh, uh i don't want to jinx myself so i'm not gonna say more <laughs> Hang on, I, hang on, I got you. There we go. You got my gist. You got the gist. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to make sure you didn't, you didn't, um, you didn't tempt the gods of irony. No, 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 and they, they always listening in twenty twenty. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll def, I'll, I'll definitely be keep. And I also saw in the uh, Discord that it looks like you guys are working on a um autofill um character sheet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Tom and Paul are working on on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, we're trying to get um. There's a there's a member of the community that it's uh, hopefully um will make um, roll twenty. Character sheet, they can be used on roll twenty. But you know that's uh, that's um, community coming. So we, you know, we hope. <laughs> Because uh, if we understand Roll20, it's one of the most used platforms to play online, especially in these times. So mm-hmm. it would be great to have, um, you know, uh, we will try to, we, we understand the importance of this tool. And uh, slowly, we are hopefully going to reach all this platform. We played online for for, uh, for a long time. As we as I said, we we basically met playing uh, Roleplay yeah. online. Mm-hmm. So... We like to to give um, this all platform the right, yeah, all the possible uh, the possible support for for playing online. So uh, we got the uh, autofill sheet coming, mm-hmm. and possibly the roll twenty one, and we will be looking to other virtual tabletops to to see if we can manage to integrate against the dark master in uh, our virtual tabletop yeah we definitely we definitely understand the potential of having this game in multiple platform and to create a platform itself on this game so people can you know um make their own like max uh, um i don't know if we can talk about it probably yes the the license the open mm-hmm. hundred license uh, yeah. We we Max <clears throat> um, also thanks to uh, Borg right Max we, I mean we have to give credit to them right 
to help yeah. us uh, write the, the, the license um, mm -hmm. for, um, in order for people to create uh, products that carry the, the Open 100 um, engine. Because, um, you know, at the end of the day, every game has its own engine. And uh, we want to be able, people to be able to create their own words and settings and games and adventures and modules, whatever they want to do, using the uh, free open license, um, Open 100 uh, engine, uh, powered by Open 100. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if anybody's interested in listening to this, you can get in touch with us. <laughs> And uh, we can go for details if the people wants to publish and, and make this platform uh, against Arc Master and Open 100 platform better and bigger and with more content possible. We will do our best to release as much content as possible. Yeah. But, you know, um, we only, there are only four of us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and the quality is always of our first, it's the first rule, you know. Yeah. And uh, so it takes time to create stuff, but um, if other people are willing to, uh, you know, uh, use the license to um, create their own, uh, mm -hmm. they're more than welcome. And we we believe that that, that all improves, uh, you know, the community and gives chances to everybody to say their own word in gaming. So uh, yeah, I just want to take advantage of uh, this top conversation to uh, put the word out. And I, de I, I definitely, I definitely appreciate the work you guys are put putting in. I, and um, when when it get when it's only it's only a matter of time before some before somebody takes their own spin, and I'm and I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on how th and how that develops because that's all that's all that's where that's where um another avenue of fun can be get can begin with this hobby, but. With all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you guys for taking the time to to come back up to the temple and putting up with all the technical problems. Um, <laughs> Don't worry, and we understand. <laughs> and deal and dealing with the hell that is time zones because I hate time zones. I know. You know what? That's what happens when you have a round or or you know a round globe. It's all mm -hmm. flat. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. But as I've said in the past, anytime you guys see fit, see fit to return, which I can see ha I can see happening in the future, the door is always open. As I often say, drinking is not mandatory around here, but it is encouraged. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Uh, be surely be back whenever yeah. you'll have it, Mildred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's always good to keep catch mm -hmm. catch up, you know, and and. Uh, and uh, talk about this wonderful hobby, yeah. Okay, and uh, brings us so much joy and uh, help us, you know, uh, leave a little for a little bit this crazy word right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so of thank course, thank you very much, Peter, for having mm -hmm. us. Yep. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everybody who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am Eurogaming Monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>